What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some r slash ask reddit. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too as it all really helps out our channel. And don't forget you can follow us on podcast too now so you can take me with you wherever you go. And you can also join the channel either through YouTube membership or Patreon. And with that being said, let's get in to today's posts. Our first post is from Ju Ban Boo Ban. <laughs> what is the most terrifying thing you've ever experienced while home alone? And our first post says, I was about 21 or 22 and living by myself at the time. I left my window open on a pleasant night. It was low enough to the ground that you could get in if you really tried, but the screen wasn't easy to take off. And I lived in a fairly safe neighborhood, so I didn't even think twice about it. Woke up in the middle of the night because I smelled smoke and I reached out to turn on my lamp and my hand hit what was very obviously a person. My brain fully woke up at that point and I realized there was a shirtless man in my bedroom smoking a cigarette and staring at me. I remember yelling for him to get out and I must have spooked him just as badly as he spooked me because he leapt out the window and took off. I slammed it shut and moved the bookcase in front of it and when I went out the next morning in daylight found the screen sitting against the house. Didn't sleep the rest of the night and I haven't slept with a window more than cracked ever since. I also absolutely refuse to live on the ground floor of a building. I don't know if he was planning to rob me or rape me or both, but it's absolutely terrifying. It makes me wonder how many times it happened and I didn't wake up. Bobby Joe 29 says, When I was 14, I woke up home alone one night around 10pm, stood in my kitchen making some cereal. It's dark outside and then all of a sudden, the loudest sound. Some drunk woman literally launched a hammer through my kitchen window, was so loud and glass was everywhere. I followed her down the street whilst calling the police. Pretty strange. Edit for everyone asking why I followed. So the reason I actually followed her was because you could see really clearly through the smashed window as it was now wide open. She looked like a very fragile little old crackhead lady that could barely walk or see straight and started stumbling away mumbling some shit once she had done it. Plus I didn't really know how the fuck I was going to explain this shit to my parents if I didn't have a solid answer. But yes, it was a very distressed walk whilst following her. Definitely an action caused by adrenaline too. Hick et Nunk says, <laughs> I hope I got your name right. When I was 19 in my first apartment, I had someone knock at the door. I looked through the peephole and it was this burly, heavyset man who abruptly started screaming to let him in. He was screaming things like he was going to beat my ass and kick the door down if I didn't open. I called the cops and as soon as someone got on the phone, he started body slamming my door to break in. I was freaking out and crying as they quickly had five cops showing within five plus minutes. As soon as he heard the sirens, he quickly walked away and they met him at the bottom of the stairs. Apparently he was after the previous renter, but was extremely intoxicated. They arrested him and thankfully he never came back. I ended up breaking my lease and moving out three months later. It was a very nice neighborhood, but it quickly made me wish I was back home with family instead of being on the other side of the United States. Sinophage says, you know those tongs in the kitchen that have a spring, but a latch to keep them together? I had a pair of those and I put the latch on and put them down on the counter. I went away for a bit and came back and they jumped off the counter at me. Biggest jump scare of my life. The latch had come undone and they sprung open, but in the millisecond when an inanimate object suddenly comes to life and jump at you, you don't realise this and totally freak out. <laughs> I love that as a little wholesome one in the middle there. Stay away from me says, so I'm home alone a lot. One day I was working and out of the corner of my eye I noticed some movement in my backyard. There was a man jumping over my fence into my backyard. Panicked, I called my then boyfriend, now fiance, and tell him what is happening. While I'm on the phone with him, I get a knock at my front door. It's a woman from CenturyLink informing me that technicians will need access to my backyard. I tell her that someone just jumped over my fence, so I think they're already there. Way to give me a heart attack, CenturyLink. <laughs> Basic speech says, When I was young, I came home from a party in the middle of the night. When my dad were out of town, I started making midnight quesadilla. I hope I got that I never can pronounce that. When I heard someone cough in the basement, I yelled and ran outside, and they took off through the backyard. Came to find out, my dad's ex-girlfriend's daughter stole her key to our house and came to rob us. She was busted a couple of years later, doing this to her sister-in-law. Someone said, how are the midnight quesadillas? And Opie replies, thankfully they didn't burn. The cheesy goodness was the best thing to combat the slight trauma. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? Quesadilla? 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 Ah, oh, don't know. Queen Mountain says, I lit two long taper candles for some ambience while I was playing guitar late at night. 
I was facing the other direction looking out the window while playing and shortly later turned around and went back towards the candles and discovered one of them was completely gone. The stand was still there but no melted wax, just a bare candle holder and the other was still lit and no shorter than it was when I lit them. It was almost 3am and I was so terrified that I got in my car and left and drove to my dad's house. Holy shit. I hate those freaky ones <laughs> where you just don't know what's going on. Fitzy's gal says, my boyfriend worked away from home a lot and I always struggled to sleep on the first night he was away. On this occasion I was woken up by the sound of a man shouting and someone banging on wood or a front door. I jumped up and looked out my bedroom window, just in time to see a man dressed all in black walking through our gardens towards the house. I ran towards the front of the house to look out the front window and make sure he kept going. He did, but he met up with another man dressed in black walking towards my house. I was terrified and called the police. They arrived in a matter of minutes and checked out the back garden, but they were gone. Turned out a neighbor had caught them both trying to steal his car and one of them escaped through the gardens while the other had run through the road and then met up outside my house. I didn't sleep at all that night and my brother came to stay in the next night. I am so glad I live in an apartment now. Much more security. Merv86 says, I've been pretty fortunate based on these comments, but I was home alone one night while my wife and son were visiting my MIL. I walked back to our bedroom to see someone rummaging through my son's room on the video baby monitor. Immediately grabbed my firearm and yelled to the other side of the house, I am armed, come out slowly, over and over while slowly making my way to his room. Got there, flipped on the light and nothing. Searched the whole house pumped full of adrenaline. Finally satisfied I was alone, I went back to my room and the guy was back in the room. I took a closer look and I am ashamed to say I was looking at myself. <laughs> the camera is a live feed and our Wi-Fi it was streaming on a huge delay. I have never known it to do that and it has not done it since. <laughs> You're lucky you didn't shoot that guy. Fireflyfly3 Fly Fly says, One evening an explosion at a petrochemical plant located a mile from my house blew out the double window in my living room while I was in the room. I definitely thought we were being bombed until I remembered where I live. I had just let my dog out to the backyard and he was completely traumatized. For the following two months, I had to carry him outside and sit in the grass with pieces of chicken just so you'd potty. Edit to add, my house is currently for sale for unrelated reasons. The next one comes from Dismal Pomegranate. This happened to me a couple of years ago. I've also lived on my own a long time, so don't get scared easily. I'd just finished reading in bed and I turned my lamp off and settled down to go to sleep and hugged my cat up close to me. This was about 1.30 in the morning. I closed my eyes and I heard a voice say, meow, like imitating a cat. My window was open so I thought it was just someone being weird outside. I opened my eyes and in the middle of my bedroom was a small boy wearing a red jumper waving his arm above his head. I leapt up like a goddamn ninja and put the light on and my heart was going mad. Now, nothing paranormal has happened in this house ever in the entire time I have lived there. I spent the whole night totally freaked out, only getting a bit of sleep when it started to get light outside. My friends thought this was hilarious when I told them. I was saying there is no way I'm living in a haunted house and started googling cleansing, exorcist and whatnot. The next few nights over, weird stuff started happening. I started sleeping with the TV on and as soon as I tried to get any sleep, I would hear freaky noises coming from it or I would notice shadows dip by the side of my bed. It was dreadful. I actually resorted to saying out loud, I'm really tired, so if you could not haunt me for one night, I'd be really grateful. <laughs> I'd never really believed in any of this sort of stuff before, so it was like an entire paradigm shift for me. Anyway, I was going on about this to my friends at work and one of them asked if I was on drugs. Well, funny enough, I just started taking a new tablet, Monte Lacaste, for my asthma. I'm not sure if I got that drug right. When I got home, read the side effects, a rare one being hallucinations. Stop taking them, no more hauntings. <laughs> God, imagine how freaky that would be when you fall asleep and someone go, meow. <laughs> the next one is from Sleepy Time Gee. Somebody tried to break in the house while I was by myself. The whole place was quiet and dark at night time. I walked past the front door to go upstairs for bed and the handle suddenly started jerking around like the Hulk was trying to get in. Then whoever it was started to either kick or shoulder the door and it made the whole frame jiggle. I completely froze and my mind went blank, just standing there like an idiot and staring. My dog bolted down the stairs like it was her time to shine, scrambled on the tile and let loose the most vicious barks I've ever heard. Whoever it was left, she was a very good girl. I miss her. Good doggo. Tin Nicker says... I was asleep at home alone. When I turned over in bed, I casually opened my eyes a little whilst turning and they were shut again just as quickly. In that split second, I could have sworn I had seen a man stood at the bottom of my bed. 
I laid still, awake with my eyes closed, trying not to act like I was awake and trying to listen for any sound in the room of someone breathing or moving. Couldn't hear anything. I was too scared to open my eyes and look. Consoled myself that there wasn't any way someone could have gotten in without me hearing a window smash and fell back to sleep. When I got up in the morning though, the front door was open. They didn't take anything and left no signs of being there. It was still very, very creepy though. Oh my God. Imagine if it was an actual real person stood there and it wasn't just a hallucination or something. Someone was actually just stood in your room staring at you and you were just there with your eyes closed. Fuck that. <laughs> no way. The next one is from Schnauzerbutt. I was living alone after my ex-husband moved out and the creepy guy across the street who was 20 years older and enjoyed drugs kept trying to date me. He would harass me when I left my house or arrived home and would threaten to rape me. I just started dating my current boyfriend and he helped hang up motion detecting lights outside. I started carrying pepper spray and leaving the alarm on whenever I was home. My boyfriend and I also agreed that if I didn't text him for a certain period of time, he couldn't get a hold of me and had to go to my house to check on things. I also CC'd him on my work calendar just in case. It got so scary that my boyfriend actually moved in a lot sooner than we planned because I felt so unsafe. After creepy guy watched my boyfriend move in and saw him putting around with project cars in the driveway, he stopped harassing me and moved away a few months later. I've never felt so unsafe in my own home, wondering if the outside lights were on because of the neighbor's cat or because creepy guy was trying to break in. Oh my god, imagine having to live like that. Goliath Bone Snake says, not exactly alone, but I was home with my newborn son and someone knocked on the front door. I was expecting my mother, but she usually comes in through the garage. I thought it was strange, but yelled, come in, because why wouldn't I? Then this cracked out old woman came stumbling through the door and asked me for a ride to the nearest gas station. I told her I didn't have a car seat for my son, so I couldn't go anywhere. So she starts screaming, that's just inappropriate, and doesn't stop, even when I'm telling her she needs to leave or I call the cops. After a minute or so, my mother actually pulls in the driveway. The crackhead sees the car and bolts back out the door, and I never see her again. That night, my truck got broken into. Can't say for sure it was the same woman, but I have a description to the cops anyway. Jimmy R 74 says, A few years back, I was home alone during a power storm. I went into the bathroom to take a dump, and at the exact same time I was shitting, I sneezed. Well, the power went out as well. The house was pitch black, and I literally thought I shit myself blind. <laughs> I couldn't see my hands, so in panic, I was yelling, no, this cannot be true. I was in panic, feeling for the toilet paper to wipe and flush. After completing the task, I just sat on the toilet, trying to figure out how to tell everyone. I literally shit myself blind by sneezing while shitting. After about two minutes of complete darkness and dread and panic, lightning struck outside and lit up my hallway. Best damn feeling ever. <laughs> I kind of like in the moment you actually think you've lost your vision. You're wondering how you're going to tell your friends that you're embarrassed that you shit yourself blind. What? <laughs> and our next one's from Morgane of Avalon. One afternoon, someone knocked at my back door. I thought it was a guy coming to read our meter. So I opened the door. Two huge guys pushed into the house and one of them threw me up against the wall. They shoved me down on the couch. They told me they were hell's angels. And they were pissed because my boyfriend was selling too much drugs, cutting into their profits. They kept calling me by my next door neighbor's name. We had suspected they were selling drugs. All of the people stopping by for less than five minutes made it pretty obvious. I just kept telling them that I wasn't her. One of them searched the house while the other kept me pinned to the couch. They started to realize they were in the wrong house because they couldn't find anything where they were told it was. My neighbor's house is a single floor with a basement. My house is a four level back split. Then I showed them my mail because it showed my name and they knew they fucked up. They started telling me that they were after my neighbor's boyfriend because he raped their cousin, which I knew was BS, but I didn't care. I just wanted them to leave. They robbed me of my cash and left. I now have locks on my screen doors. <laughs> I love the fact that they got the wrong house, but they still robbed your ass. What the hell, man? And it's one of those ones, would you report that? Would you report Hell's Angels? I think not. <laughs> I think fuck that. Bloodfield says, I was chilling on the couch doing whatever when suddenly a really heavy person starts sprinting in our attic. Sounds like steel toe boots and everything. I'm a really small woman so I immediately freaked out, thinking there's a gigantic man stomping around my home. Then the screaming starts, literally fucking screaming, like something from Exorcist, and there's multiple voices. I sneaked outside and cried, extremely shaken, and called the cops. Guess what's in my attic? Not a big rapey rapist. No, raccoons. Also, the raccoons were mating. That's where the screaming came from. I bawled to the cops about horny raccoons. <laughs> Edgar says, I had a choking scare when I was like 11 and I was home alone watching TV while eating Skittles. 
I like to put a bunch in my mouth and make a skittle ball that I would chew on. Something on the show I was watching made me laugh and I swallowed the ball and it got lodged in my throat. I then experienced a few seconds of sheer terror because I realised that there was nobody here to help me at all and I was probably going to die. Then I remembered some cartoon or something where someone jammed their stomach on a chair and got something unstuck from their throat. So I lunged at the corner of a recliner as hard as I could with my stomach and it actually worked and popped the small ball out. It was super lucky because I had really no idea what I was doing but one of the worst feelings I have ever experienced. Definitely never ate skittles that way again after that. Damn, I, don't, I used to do something similar with, um, I don't know if you've got them in the US, but Chewits, they were like just little squares. Like what, opal fruits as well. They're like the same thing. And I used to ram those, all, like a whole packet into a ball and eat it like an apple. Insane times, man. Never choked on it though. Broke WA Bunny says, I was babysitting a kid who had a video monitor and was told that she wouldn't wake up while the parents were out. And if she did to call them right away. I was watching TV and the monitor set off to the side to keep an eye on her. And right around 11, the camera's view shifted a few inches. It then began to slightly jiggle like someone was messing with it. I was squinting at it trying to decide what I was actually seeing. And I kid you not, the whole screen burst into static for a few seconds and the kid started wailing. She stood up and was screaming in her crib, just like one of the kids from The Sims. When she didn't fall back to sleep after a few minutes, I called mum and she said, okay, we're on our way home anyway. If you think she has nightmares, sometimes it's fine. Never again. Lois Paisley says, one night I was home alone grilling and chilling, drinking beer and smoking dope. About half lit. Wearing my hoe clothes, it was a great time. As soon as I sat down to eat, I heard a woman yelling for help and pounding on doors. Once I realised she wasn't a threat to me, I sprinted up the road to find her. She was covered in blood and told me her husband was trapped in the truck he flipped. She kept trying to get me to help her, pull him out of the truck. And I said, lady, I know this is an emergency, but I ain't no EMT. The worst part was I live in the woods with no cell service. But luckily, I was able to get to my landlord's attention so we could call 911 from the landline. I was up until 3am that night because I could not wind down after the fact. Everyone survived and the guy got out on his own, but it was the scariest night of my life. And that is it for today's stories. I thought we'd try a bit of Ask Reddit because we haven't done this in, I don't know how long, months and months, I think. Um, as generally, it's oversaturated with the, with the bots. <laughs> so it's not worth reading most of the time. But if you can help out by liking and sharing and all that good stuff, it will really help me. So I can maybe do this a bit more because I do really enjoy Ask Reddit as well. It's good fun to read sometimes, especially when you get stories like this. Um, so let me know in the comments below what you think of it. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.